welcome back to episode number 49 of Travel Talk. This is part two of leaving Sydney and heading up the East Coast. Um, last episode I covered leaving Sydney, obviously, uh, going to Twist Tops Retreat, which is a national, uh, it's a, in Barrington Park, which is a national park. It's like a lodge place and we went tubing, made pizzas and such. Uh, we went to a koala hospital last episode and also arrived at Spike Surf Camp, which is where I would be learning to surf, which is always good. Um, so yeah, we'll pick up from where we left off on that last episode. If you didn't watch the last episode, maybe go and watch that first, because it might not make sense if not, but you know. Um, anyway, yeah, so my first full day at SpotX, uh, we all woke up about nine o'clock sort of time, because uh, we had a ten o'clock surf lesson, so we went to all be up and ready for that. And uh, yeah, everyone in the group was more than willing to give it a go, even me, who had never ever stood on a surfboard in my life. Um, but yeah, we spent 15 minutes in our group being taught what to do and what not to do. And uh, what hand signals we needed to give, what types of wave swaying for all that. Just all the basic information really. Um, we all grabbed our boards and headed off to the beach uh, to receive some more teaching on how to stand on the boards and like, how to correctly get on and off of them and fall off of them like so that we wouldn't hurt ourselves. Uh, which is always important because you don't want to break a leg. And uh, then it was into the water and uh, time to put to use what we just learned, which uh, <laughs> basically that half hour training and it was like, go. <laughs> I won't lie, I fell off about 50 times or so, but you know, I stood up on it once, so that was pretty cool, considering it was my first time. Uh, a lot of other people were obviously a lot better than me because a lot of them had already done it previously. Um, but yeah, I was quite happy with my achievement standing up on the board, so uh, yeah, I was... Uh, I was it was a really good experience, it's something that I'd never have tried back home, so to have given it a go there and have like, really, I, I enjoyed doing it, I really enjoyed, you know, trying to stand up and falling off 50 times and really breaking my ankle at one point, but other than that, it was a good time. Uh, so yeah, surfing was fun, it was a really cool experience and something to tick off that I've done. Yeah, I headed back after that for lunch, uh, we had kangaroo burgers and kangaroo sausages, because well, why not, it's Australia, eat some kangaroo. Um, so yeah, we had that, and that took us up to about 2 o'clock when we put our swimmers back on and went off to do some kayaking. Um, we drove about 5 minutes in the bus to get to the kayak place and soon arrived to get the kayaks off the van. And I had to carry them about 10 minutes walk to the river that we'd be going on. Uh, we had another brief safety talk from our instructor who didn't tell us until about halfway through that he was actually colourblind and was telling us to give him certain hand signals instead of telling us things because he couldn't actually see colours, so that didn't help. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they were two-man kayaks, so it meant you had to help someone paddle. So I went with Lawrence, who was a young English bloke. Uh, we didn't really see much when we kayaked down the river, but again, another great experience, something to tick off, and, uh, and another amazing memory in the old memory bank, so uh, all good. Jumped back on the bus again, uh, headed back to the camp to dry off and wait for dinner, which was like, I think we had fish and veg and stuff, so that was cool. Uh, he got cooked by some Swedish guy named Bjorn. Uh, we didn't actually know who he was, he just sort of all of a sudden turned up. I don't even think Nick knew who he was. <laughs> Nick's been there like quite a few times. This bug just turned up and was like, oh, I'll well, cook for you. And we're like, okay. <laughs> didn't poison us, so it was all good. Uh, we had a few more drinks that night before heading off for an early night because we'd be leaving camp at 9 o'clock the next morning. And uh, we had to get up, obviously, at 8, have breakfast, pack all that stuff again. Uh, so, yeah, that took us on to the next day. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, I think hostels at this point and such were taking a little bit of a toll on me. Even though in the next kind of six months after this, I'd be standing a lot more. Um, but, yeah, I was starting to get a little bit uh, cranky as such because I wasn't getting enough sleep. Because, obviously, hostels are nice. And they're fun places to uh, meet people, but you don't get as much sleep as you'd want to because obviously people are just coming in and out constantly, uh, most of the time at weird hours. So, yeah, it was, uh, hostels were getting a little bit annoying, but still, I bared it. And like I say, I stayed in a lot more after this, so that was just kind of like a temporary blip at the time. Uh, but yeah, we left uh, Surf Camp, and uh, after we'd had breakfast, Headed towards Byron Bay, stopped off at a place called Yamba, which is kind of a port town, and got some incredible ocean views from there. Uh, some of the guys went swimming, and I kind of chilled out and didn't be bothered to go swimming because it was cold, and I was like, no, nah, not today. Nah. 
Um, so yeah, they did that. Uh, we took some photos. Uh, lunchtime hit about, we had a lunch about one o'clock. Went to Coles to grab some more food and drinks before heading back on the bus to Byron. And uh, it was that day that I first had dairy milk chocolate with Vegemite in it. Now, obviously Vegemite isn't a big thing in England, but in Australia, obviously, it's like the biggest thing in the world. And uh, yeah, they they put it in Cadbury's chocolate. And so obviously needed to try that, see what it tasted like. And uh, yeah, never, ever, ever try that. Ever try. It's like putting Marmite in chocolate. Just worse. A lot worse. I think Marmite in chocolate would have been better than that. So yeah, not great. Not great. Um, but yeah, we uh, stayed at Coles until about four, and then arrived in Byron at about five thirty, I think. Uh, dropped our bags off at the hostel and went for something to eat. Uh, luckily, it was kind of a little restaurant across from our hostel, as uh, so we went in there. Uh, the hostel I was actually staying in was the one that the in betweeners stayed in in the second film when they went to Australia. So that's pretty cool. And uh, so I saw all the bits, and like, I recognised as soon as you walk in this hostel, you recognise parts from the film, and you're like, well. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't in between them for like a week and a half. So, and um, yeah, had dinner, um, wandered around the in between hostel, and went back to the room. I think I rang my mum because I've got a feeling it was her birthday that day. So I rang her. Um, then yeah, just kind of chilled out for the night. I think um, like obviously, like I say, I needed some sleep because I was missing out on sleep big time. And uh, yeah, just I was kind of missing at that point as well. Like it had been at this time, it had been three months that we'd been traveling, roughly three and a half maybe. And uh, yeah, I was kind of missing uh, structure as such. I was kind of missing having a job. So yeah, I was missing that a little bit, which is why I was kind of waiting to get to Brisbane so I could get a job and you know start earning again and such. Which it's kind of panned out. It kind of didn't, but it kind of did. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that in later episodes. So. Um, but yeah, I'll leave this episode here. Now in Byron Bay, obviously, at the hostel. Plenty to see and do in Byron Bay. Um, so that was keeping you occupied for the next week. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. This has obviously been part two. Um, the next episode will just be Byron Bay and the first day there. I think the first day that I was in Byron Bay, we went to a place called Nimbin. Which, if you Google Nimbin right now, it comes up that it's the drug capital of Australia. So that'll be a fun episode to look forward to. Look forward to that one. Drug capital of Australia. Woo. Um, but yeah, hopefully, like I say, you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you have. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time for Nimbin, drug capital of Australia. Woo. So yeah. Mm -hmm.